All right, are we live? How are we looking? Who are people joining? Yay, people are joining. this time people can't say I'm late for the stream because it's technically technically started early so if anyone wants to get on me for you know oh you're late oh you're late no I'm not you're late I'm playing that card uh, hello to everyone in chat including train of thoughts roommate hey you can Hey, you finally got to play Shadows Over Loathing. Yes, I finally did. And I am... pleased about that. Because it's about... I Most of it is just involves me reading and narrating, which is sort of what my channel's all about. Me narrating train facts, and now I get to narrate Shadows Over Loathing. Which... If you've not played West of Loathing, um, or you've not seen Markiplier's playthrough of it, I highly recommend playing it because it is... Oh god, is it funny. It is such... I don't know how to describe the humour, but I love it. I love it so much. Now let me move my microphone, get it into a better position. Alright, there we go. My phone just dinged. Why is my phone dinging? I will put my phone on unding so that will not disturb the stream. Uh, let's see. Plot twist, he decided to play something different to wind us up. You wish. You wish I was playing either Railroads Online or something else. You wish I was playing that, but no, I'm playing Shadows Over Loathing. Which, I feel like I really should cut to that. Uh, give me a second in OBS. Uh... There we go. Let's get some audio going. Ooh, that might be a bit too loud. Hang on. I'll swack up my microphone audio a bit. Uh, deafen you lot. There we go. Now you can see what's happening. Am I too loud? Too quiet? Is the game too loud? Etc. Etc. Gotta make sure. Gotta make sure you're all comfortable. Where is the Boaty Boat game? There is no Boaty Boat game. I lied. That never existed. Uh, game's kind of quiet. I did turn the volume down of the game. Let me... I just want you... It's one of those where like, I like you guys to be able to hear me over the game. Audio good. Yeah, I'm going to be honest, I have no idea what this game is. Well, you're in for a treat. Essentially... Essentially, Shadows Over Loathing, or the, the Loathing series in general, that's West of Loathing, Kingdom of Loathing. Um, it's just these stick figures, and it's kind of like a text RPG mixed with a bit of normal RPG. And... It's just goofy. It's just stupid humour with stupid things happening. Oh, now the music's too loud. Okay. How about there? It's awkward because I can't hear what the stream is hearing. And so it's... I don't know. 
I'm not a professional streamer. So Henry Stickman as an RPG. Yes and no. Perfect, better. Okay. That's good. Right. Uh, we're on about 36 people here in the stream. Hello to everyone. And uh, I feel like... Um, I feel like this is a good... Good sort of time to kick things off. So I will... Now, now we've actually started, I will click the new game button. Oh, man. Unless... Unless... The little blue box has appeared on the ad symbol. Now we all know what that means. to just click the add button. I've got one yes. I'm not hearing any no's. Uh, someone said nine. That's a number, not an objection. Uh, yet, that's... Um Again, these are all words, but none of them mean no. Alright, I'm, I'm clicking the button. Boom. There, you got an ad. I'm gonna watch the view counter dip down for a second as people are taken away to L'Oreal or whatever they're recommended on their YouTube feed. Maybe an advert for Northern Rail, Southern Rail, wherever you live in the country. Amtrak. There's a lot of Americans in my audience. Union Pacific. I'm. I don't really know how many passenger railroads there are in America. I really should. I don't, but I should. Maybe I'm just a pretender. Thanks for the battle royale ad. Okay, what's the battle royale though? You got. You can't just say you got a battle royale ad. Is it Fortnite? Or is it one of those, like, crappy mobile games? Like, the crazy adverts, where it's like, a husband slapping the wife, and the wife goes away and cries, and then it cuts to, like, one of those Candy Crush problem solvers. Man, mobile game ads are just something else, aren't they? Should I start paying for your ads on YouTube? Like, should I just start putting my videos all over YouTube as ads? I don't know if that would make... I think more people would hate me for that, though. I don't know. Yeah, actually, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm considering TikTok, though. Hate me all you want, but publicity is publicity. How is it to finally play what you wanted? It feels nice. It'll feel better when I actually start playing it. Which, uh, it looks like everyone here is here that's going to want to watch the stream. So, um... New game. Oh, as soon as I click new game, the doorbell rings. Bear with me, folks. For goodness sake.
Don't forget your keys next time. You better be! Oh, God. Jesus. <sighs> oh, Lord. <sighs> you start streaming and your roommates forget the keys. Right. It's the pizza guy. I'm gonna order takeaway later, though. I'm considering that. Oh, can you see my mouse on the screen? Oh, you can. Oh, that's not gonna get annoying. WAS indeed to move. <laughs> Return to me. Whoa. Do I just dodge traffic? Can I? What if I stand in the road? <laughs> I just die immediately. <laughs> Good game. Good game. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh no. Okay, let's let's try this for real. Alright. This smells like a diner. It and it smells like they're open. Hopefully they don't have a no shirt, no shoes, no magazine stuck to your face, no service sign posted. Go inside. Nightingale welcomes all travellers. I'm not talking to you to wipe that look off your face. The copy of Look magazine that's stuck to your face. The bathroom's in the back. She points over to the right as far as you know. Smells like pie? You probably shouldn't bother till you get this magazine stuck off your face. Oh. I just tiptoeing around. Shouldn't bother. Some kind of big glass and metal box here, but you can't actually see what it is. Try the coffee, you'll like it eventually. Oh man. I love this game. Already. Uh, it's the bathroom, probably. Go inside. You blunder your way into the bathroom and eventually find the sink. After fumbling with the faucet for a while, you manage to disentangle yourself from the magazine. You stare into the mirror, revealing... My face. Oh, I've been given an opportunity to choose already. <laughs> Fish and chips, day in the life of a true Brexit geezer. <laughs> Love you, chat. What face do I pick? There's so many good options. I like this moustache. I like... There's no one else with any real... F well, this one's got a kind of beard, but I like... I like the moustache more. Monocle man, monocle man, mon Oh, actually, now you've pointed out the monocle man. Really, I need to give each of these characters a voice. Because if I'm... If I choose a character with a certain look, they need to have a certain voice. I'm torn between regular moustache and monocle moustache. Unibrow lad, just Mr. Frown. That's all he is, just... Oh, man. Nah, I've got to go with Monocle Mustache Man. Oh my god, it's Warren Warlord the Third. you're right! <laughs> From Choo Choo Charles, it's Warren Warlord. There you are! <laughs> yes! Okay, let me move the mouse out of the way. Oh, they've got one of those new meat-operated multi-selection phonographs, or jukeboxes as the kids call them. Neat. Hey, it looks like there's something in the coin return. I've got one meat. I, I, I got meat, I guess. A couple of older folks are having an animated con discussion. Uh, well, one of them is. Listen in. Um, the way these young women act these days, with their short hair and their sassy talk and their dresses that don't even cover their, their ankles? It's scandalous. 
And those dances they do, flailing on the round like I don't know what. I'd have thought Prohibition would have put put the kibosh put have put the <laughs> the kibosh? The kibosh. On that some sort of tomfoolery, but no sir! Can't imagine dancing a waltz to the music they're playing nowadays, though. And that's the problem right there! This newfangled jazz music! All the drums and, and clarinets and such. What kind of word is that anyway? Jazz. I think our cups got switched. You're supposed to be drinking decaf. <laughs> A couple of young women are chatting breezily over coffee. Hey, Mac. Oh. Sorry, I read that the wrong way around there. Hey, Mac, what town is this? P... <laughs> Pukeepsie. That's Is that how you pronounce that? Pukeepsie? Pukeepsie? It's a town in New York. Oh, is it? I don't know if that's true or not, because Pukeepsie is such a Pukeepsie. Oh, that's how you pronounce it. Pukeepsie. I'm taking your word on this, Yellow Belly. If you're lying to me, I'm gonna ban you from the channel. Altogether. Now, oh, let's see. What voice should I give him? I, I've not given my channel, not the channel, my guy a voice. Pekepsi, and you are you two traveling? Yeah, Ocean City, turning into a small, a real sawmill. So we bo we boosted her jelly beans breezer for a weekend. Well, to the hot potato. Oh, bu oh, Bushwa, you may, oh, Bushwa, you make it sound like we went south with it. I flew in my, I flew in my kite. Everything's a Jake. Geez, I'm pretty sure I'm only three or four years older than you two, but I barely understand what you're saying. What are you, a cancelled stamp? Go put some pepper in your shoes. Oh, Lord. I can't? How is it that I've only read, like, th five lines of dialogue and I'm still unable to pronounce half of it? Uh... Some petty vandal has scratched the name Dan Bob into the surface of this table. The sign says meat only, no credit. Well now that Well now, that looks much better. I'm Ethel. I'm I don't wanna have any of those names. Oh great, and I have to put a name. Do I just call him Warren Warlord? Or Alternately, I put in a very rude, naughty name. Brexit Geezer, Warren Warlord, Charlie. David. Mark the Third. Rude, naughty name. Ben Dover. I will play Railroads Online again soon. Hold on. This is going to be the name. Okay. Voting time. Because I've come up, I've got a good naughty name to call my character. The Warren Warlord with his continuity from, you know, we're creating a law if I call him Warren Warlord. But a naughty name will be infinitely more hilarious the longer the game goes on. It's like when you name your Pokemon something like Dildo.
Okay. Looks like the naughty name won. Okay, so it's... There we go. I, hi, I'm Mike. Mike who? Mike Hawk. Pleased to meet you, Mike Hawk. What can I get you? <laughs> I am such a child. Okay. Can I get a cup of coffee? You sure can. Best cup of coffee in the state. But if I may say so myself, if I may say so myself, that'll be one meat. Great. To go, please. I'm, I've got hot coffee. Ethel pours you a steaming hot cup of fresh black java. I got hot coffee, diner coffee, a paper cup of fresh black coffee. It smells better than any coffee you've had on this trip. Anything else, hon? Does the bus, bus to Ocean City pick up here? Sure does. Should be here any minute. Good thing, too. I hear we're, we're in for rain tonight. What takes you to Ocean City? My uncle lives there. I've got a letter for him. No, sorry. I got a letter from him. He wants me to help help him with something. That's a reason, Han. But it's somebody else's reason. What's your reason? She locks eyes with you. Uh, I, uh... <laughs> Mind your own business. I really want to help. I got in some trouble back home. I'm searching for something. I'm just seeking my fortune. Mind your own business. Now, I really want to help. Your uncle must be pretty important to you. Of course he is. He's family. Well, actually, everyone who needs help deserves help. You got Scout's honor. You believe that one good t turn for another leaves the whole world kind. It does. Ethel beams. Well, isn't that sweet? The world could use more folks like you, I think. Smile and leave. I got some pies. What does this guy want? Hey there, is there something particularly interesting about that coffee? It's my first one. Of the day? No, it's my first coffee ever. Oh, what do you think? I think it's a bad beverage. It's bitter and makes my stomach hurt. Oh, well, it's not for every, I suppose. Yes, I think I'll have... Yeah, I think I'll have another one after this, though. And then maybe every morning for the rest of my life. Well, enjoy. That's what I don't get about coffee. I, I genuinely don't like the taste of coffee. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, I got my luggage, diner coffee, I will drink. Good grief, this coffee smells good. You can't bring yourself to drink it because you might really need some coffee later. I have a hearth sparrow? When you were four years old, hearth flew in... No, hearth the sparrow, sorry. When you were four years old, Hearth flew into your bedroom window and refused to leave. He's been with you as a familiar ever since. Aww. Unpack my luggage. Unpacking in a diner seems like a bad idea. Okay, makes sense. Uh, I guess there's nothing else to do in here. I'll uh, go outside and wait for the bus. You pull out the letter. You, uh, you pull out the letter you got from Uncle Murray and read it again. Murray Morris. Uh, Murray's Antiques. 111 Plunkett Street, Ocean City. Dear Mike, I hope this letter finds you well, and I hope it finds you quickly. Something quite serious has happened, and I need help. I need the help of your adventuresome spirits. Come to my shop in Ocean City as soon as you are able, please. Your Uncle Murray. Put away the letter. Is that a clown? Why is there a clown on the bus? You're just about to go mad from the monot- <laughs> you're, you're just about to go mad from the monotony of this ride when the bus suddenly juts to a stop. You look out the window expecting to see the sights and sounds of Ocean City, but instead you see an endless expanse of extremely wet trees. Uh oh. Drink red gold to protect your 
Protect your family? What does that mean? Probably you should ask the driver what is going on instead of just wandering off aimlessly into the night. It's the bus driver. What's going on? This doesn't look like Ocean City. Nope. Sorry. Nope. Sorry about this. We're out of gas. Oh, jeez. You didn't fill her up before we left? I filled up the bus, but this t this trip takes exactly one tank full of gas. He hands you an empty gas can. Plus one additional can. It's a crude device, but it beats keeping your gasoline loose on the ground. <laughs> Swell. Why do I have to go get it? Well, I'd go myself, except for two reasons. Those being... Firstly, being I'm the bus driver, I'm legally responsible for this bus, and I gotta keep an eye on it. And secondly, because of my leg. What's wrong with your leg? It's attached to a fella that doesn't want to go wandering around in the rain at night. So I, well, I... <laughs> well, alright then, guess I haven't got much choice. Can I borrow your umbrella at least? This is a left-handed umbrella. I'm left-handed as it happens. But you aren't rich. But you aren't registered to my umbrella insurance. Okay. Sorry about that. Hey, I do have a flashlight that you can use. Good luck. Well... You wouldn't make a dog walk six miles in this rain, no matter how bad you wanted to. What this ba what this bus lacks in comfort, it makes up for it unreliability. The only clown I see is the clown in the mirror. Oh, you. Prankster. An old billboard from before the war. Gas station is literally right here. Why is that? M2 all cans, a whole pyramid of them. There's no baseball bat leaning against the wall here. Grab it. You've got ice and baseball bat. A classic dirt water slugger. With this, you can either take somebody out out to the ball game or just take them out. Yeah, it's weird that the cash register is pointed towards the front of the store. Loot it. It's almost empty, but you find some loose change. Seven meat. There's one object left on the shelf. You've got a cheese loaf. You, nobody in their right mind would consider this vile substance a snack. A cheese loaf. A box of cheese loaf brand pasteurized spreadable cheese food product. Modern technology has done some extremely revolting things. Postcard. Hold on, what was this? What was in that door back here? Uh, employees only. Are you an employee? No. Screw it, I'm going in. Really? You never mentioned working at a gas station? Yes, really. Well, okay, if you say so, go through. Desk, presumably optimized for doing gasoline-related business. Search it. Four of the drawers contain nothing but old receipts and pencil stubs. The fifth one is locked. If a broken radio, if a broken radio can still be considered nice, this is a pretty nice radio. The shelf smells like axle grease and old paint, probably because that's what's on it. The shelf is laden with miscellaneous electrical, electrical widgets and doodads. You don't have any use for them. The shelf is full of old personnel files. Look up Mike Hawk. Well, I'll be darned. Here's your file. You do work here. You've got gas station personal file. This is your personal file from an abandoned gas station you work at. <laughs> Sorry, I ever doubted you. Oh, that's not where I to go. Each object that you examine on this shelf is dirtier and more boring than, la than the one you looked at before. Some kind of weird machine. Looks like this thing controls the lift that car you're working on. Nothing happens, it must not have power. You really want to know the story behind this night. Stand clear of lift before operating Steve. <laughs> yes, Steve. Well, let me just... Oh. Oh, this is nice. Oh. Oh, this is my file, I guess. Uh, where's that cheese loaf? Increases your moxie. Also, it's Heath the Sparrow. Sorry, I mispronounced that. Oh, let's see. It's a big tool chest, but all the 
Good tools have already been stolen. It's a fuse box. Hmm, open it. As advertised, this box is... <laughs> As advertised, this box is... This is a box containing one fuse. However, the fuse is broken, which is probably not intended. You should keep an eye out for replacement. Must be one around here somewhere. Oh, I'll be back in this one. For a fuse. I got a fuse. It's weird that they call It's weird that they call this a fuse when the whole point of it is for it to split apart if something goes wrong. Place E. The car is missing its gas tank, but there is a big p glass of gas. What? The car is missing its gas tank, but there is a big glass of gasoline in the cup holder. <laughs> Why is that? Who just leaves gasoline in the cup holder? What the? <laughs> there's nothing else of in. Uh, there's nothing else of interest in the car. There's also no interest for a year if you'd like to buy it. I would not suit yourself. Can I? Okay, so I need mysticality. I need to figure out. I can figure out the machine. So I've got some gasoline. Um, there's a bit of gas left in the pump, but there's no hose on it. This pump is full of water, and this instead of gas, this gas pump is empty. Um, can I find a hose? Is like a hose in here? There's got to be a hose. Nope. On to the next place, then, I guess. Finnegan's Optimal Boxing Gym. <laughs> Finnegan's Optional Boxing Gym. You don't have to fight if you don't want to. <laughs> Good to know it's not compulsory. Oh, hello. A miserable looking hitchhiker is standing in the rain, listlessly sticking out her thumb. Hi there! Her head ve turns very slowly to face you. But her eyes don't quite meet yours. Can you give me a lift? I need to get to Albany. Sorry, I'm going the other way. Oh. Also, I don't have a car. Oh. What's your name? Lydia. Nice to meet you, Lydia. Although I admit the circumstances aren't great. So, what's in Albany? No, I just want to go somewhere new. Albany isn't new, though. It's one of the oldest cities in the country. Okay, that's fair. Sure, I can get some gas. Gas? The bus I was on ran out and the driver sent me to find some. A bus? Yeah, I'm trying to get to Ocean City. I've never been there before. Well, okay then. How about this rain, huh? Lydia looks slightly surprised and glances around slowly. Oh, it's raining? Yeah, it sure is. What a night to be stuck out on the road, right? I hadn't noticed. I get the feeling you aren't much of a noticer. Well, anyway... Seen any good movies lately? I saw Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde at the Nickelodeon. Oh, uh, that's a classic. What did you think? It was very scary. I liked it. I prefer comedies myself. Have you seen the new Buster Keaton one? The camera... Oh, I've... Yeah, Buster Keaton, man! Ah, oh, man. Well, I guess it's public domain, so they can reference it. I love Buster Keaton. One of these days, all of us, chat, we're going to watch The General. Actually, no, that would be terrible. That would be a terrible stream. Watch The General, it's on YouTube. I don't know who that is. Oh, he's great! Have you seen Sherlock Jr.? That's my favourite. Really terrific. Um, really good books lately. I read The Invisible Man. That was really good. Oh yes, H.G. Wells is great. Have you read his new one? War in the Air? I didn't care for it. The one I'm thinking of is Mr. Something on Something Island. I forget the name, but it was terrible. His early works are the best. I like the time machine. Yes, I love that one. I'm glad we were able to find something we connect. I'm glad we were able to find something we could connect on video. So, um... 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 
And I just keep saying um over and over. <laughs> Okay, bye, good luck. This field is extremely corny. Hey, uh, I, I ain't wanna be unfriendly, but this is a private residence that you all just barge into. Oh, geez, sorry. Everything's so desolate outside. I just assumed this place was abandoned. Well, come more in, you'd be right. So you might as well get in out of the rain for a spell. Thanks. My name is Mike Hawk. Howdy, Mike. I'm, I'm Elias. Elias Chekhov. Make yourself at home. Look around. There's a rifle hanging over the fireplace. Ask Elias about it. Are you leaving this rifle behind? Yep. How come? Well, it's a varmint rifle. And where I'm going, there ain't any varmints. There's vermin, to be sure, and critters such like. But the, but the Almanac don't list any examples of varmint qua varmint. If you, if you know what I mean. I do know what you mean. No need to fret over it right now in any case. The gun is for later. Later? Uh, yep, much later. Huh. Okay. There's a weird device on top of this box. What's this funny looking thing? That's a duck call. What's it for? It's calling ducks. Oh, fun. Used to be. Don't work anymore on account of being haunted. Haunted? Yeah, well, not exact haunted exactly. A bunch of spiders got in there, and now it sounds all scary when you blow it. I see. If you want it, it's yours. You gingerly take the duck call, trying very hard not to think about spiders. <laughs> haunted duck call. You're pretty sure this duck call is haunted, but you can't remember the story of how it got that way. <laughs> what spiders? Good job. Oh, I'm... There's nothing on the clotheslines. There's nothing on the clothesline except a pair of socks and an old gun. Look at it. You took the gun and leave the socks. They don't look safe. You got lights of rusty pistol. You spend all t you spend all that time cleaning your gun, and the rain comes along and ruins it. Typical. Oh, the socks just keep getting wetter and wetter. There's a banging coming from over here. What's causing that? That scarecrow is a bit more intimidating than usual. The crows around him must be really aggressive. <laughs> uh, barn door's locked. I uh, can't go that way. Yeah. I'll keep looking around the house. <laughs> bears. These boxes are labelled bears. Ask about them. Are these boxes really full of bears? Nah, those boxes... Oh, those boxes are all canned pears. I had a little fun with writing the labels, is all. Want a can? I got one left that didn't fit in. You got Bibson's extra sweet pears. It's a can of pears in a syrup. The label describes it as sickly sweet. They should really hire a new copywriter. Increases your mysticality. Label box named Gears. My daughter, my daughter Simone, left those behind when she went off to school. Figured I should keep them for her. That makes sense. Tears. Wait, are these boxes of tears or tears? Don't be ridiculous. You can't put neither of them in boxes. That just don't make any kind of sense. So I know my mouse keeps going on the screen. I'm sure it's really annoying. Sorry about that. It's a Kitchen's Ink brand kitchen sink. A collection of stains makes it... A collection of stain... Yeah. A collection of stains makes its home, home on the range. <laughs> Shares. What's in here? Stocks? Scissors? Oh, shears. It's a very large box, considering this... Because this is a very large box, considering that most people own either zero or one ring. Is this box really full of class rings? Yep, about 140 of them. Do you go to... College? Did you go to college 140 times? Hey, nah, of course not. I just collect them as all. Why? Well, they're rare, but not very rare. They're all different in interesting ways and they're shiny. That's why. That there's the collecting trifecta. 
Oh, well, okay then. This door is locked as some kind of elaborate electric lock. Ask about it. Oh, that's my daughter Simone's room, who's left for college. Hopefully she ain't left anything important in there, because cause I plumb forgot how to work the crazy lock she invented. I see. Door that leads to the bathroom. Ask if you can use it. Can I use the bathroom? Sure. How'd you know the door led to the bathroom, though? I've always had a knack for knowing which doors lead to bathrooms is all. Well, good for you, I guess. Head into the bathroom. You can see your face in uh, Elia's mirror. Just like your mirror back at home. Gaze into it. Look at yourself in the mirror. Hi, Mike. Smile. Hey there, good looking. Frown. Aw, oh, what's wrong? Scowl. Why, I yada. Worry. Oh, no, no, no. Cringe. He remembers something really embarrassing you did a couple of years ago. Ugh. Freak out. <laughs> oh, I just noticed my face is making different poses. <laughs> Close your eyes. I'll just assume this looks good. Oh, okay, so I can just give myself different facial expressions if I want to. Yeah, I'm going to go with a crazy one. I want a crazy little moniker. There we go. A surprisingly modern toilet for such an old house. Flush it. You flush Chekhov's toilet, hoping it won't come back to haunt you later. <laughs> no, bathtub. A vicious claw-footed bathtub. This door looks like it hasn't been used in a while. Now where does this door lead, I ask you? Spare bedroom. I ain't used it in forever. Don't even bother opening the door since that dust devil got in there free. Feel free to help yourself, though. I doubt you'll find much use in there. The dust devil? Yeah, those critters are a real nuisance around here. They're attracted to beds that ain't been cleaned up properly, and since I lost my broom back in 26, it's been unreal. What did you... What did Simone call it? A nutrient-rich environment. Warmly little beast. Real territorial. A tasteful arrangement of dry... Dry fronds. A bookshelf. A shelf full of plump westerns. Cowgirls of Darkness. Sheriffs of the West. Incident on Owl Ranch. Betrayal at the Horse... Horse Thief Canyon. Oh, hey, this one looks like it's worth a read. You've got a handgun... The handguns... Unlike most old westerns, this one is written from the perspective of a gun. The story is pretty boring, but contains some technically complex descriptions of advanced shooting techniques. Oh, I, how do I upgrade my mysticality? I want to upgrade, I want to upgrade that. Hold on, do I have any items that upgrade my mysticality? That's Moxie. What's my mysticality? Oh, it needs to be at like 5 for this. Damn it! Old Dusty Knight's that search you found an old bulletin draw. That dust devil's really kicking up some dickens under there. Drag it out. Are you sure Chekhov said these things were pretty dangerous? Yes, I'm sure. Ow! Throw rock. Dealing two psychic damage. How many? Okay, it's got 10 HP. That'll deal two damage, so bang. Oh, that was a free action as well. Can my bird do anything? Oh. should have listened to Chekhov. I guess so. Well, combat's off to a good start. Uh, oh, let's go out here. Oh, the doors are locked. Alright, I'm going to fight the Scarecrow. Why is my H... Okay. Uh... Throw the rock, and I'm going to bash him with the bat. Ow! I 
Okay. That is real, Mr. Cole. Okay, so I gotta keep debuffing him. I mean, that's not gonna do much good, because. Oh, wait. Yay! Now it's just a regular scarecrow with a gun. You've got enough XP to learn a new skill. Open the character sheet by the Yay! Mysticality, so I'll buy this skill. I like being mystical. This thing's crow menacing days are over. Oh hey, an old tractor. There's an old rag shoved in where the gas cap should be. Pull out the rag. You pull out the rag and sniff and sniff the tank. Smells like there's a little gas left in it. Collect it. You dip the rag into the gas tank, soak soak up all the gas, then bring it out into your can. Two thirds full of gas. There's got to be its way, a way to unlock that bar. It has to be. I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna try fighting this dust devil again. Is there a way to? T oh yeah, let me turn up the music a bit. Or is there just? I guess there's just no music while I'm doing this. Okay. Whack by the back. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't know what I was expecting with that, uh... Okay, I'm just... I'm gonna leave. I got some gas. Oh! This turtle's stuck in its back. Why aren't you helping it? I am. I am helping it. There you go, little buddy. Oh. Enjoy blue cola. It's the honorable choice. What is this? Topeka. You've heard of a lot of nice things about to. You've heard a lot of nice things about Topeka, but not. <laughs> Not a thousand two hundred miles worth of nice things. An open fire in an enclosed space. Classic. A harmonica looking. A cheerful looking hobo who tootles idly on a harmonica. Interrupt his tootling. Hi there, I'm Mike. Oh, howdy there, neighbor, I'm Hal. Pleasure to meet you, though I'm not actually from around here, though. The well, way I see it, this whole country is my home, so everyone's my neighbor. Oh, that's nice. Either there or all trespassers who better get off of my property. I'm just Josh and your friend. Here for some jerky. What kind? Clam. It's a local delicacy. Clam jerky. Sure, I'll have some jerky. <laughs> Clam jerky. It's always nice to get a gift from a kindly stranger, but it's especially nice when the gift is dried flesh. <laughs> Can't abide the stuff myself. It's like eating dried slug, but saltier. Come to think of it, it's exactly what this is. You're really selling me the, on this local delicacy. If you ask me, the locals are a bit weird. Okay, uh, where are you from? Originally, I'm from Hawaii, but I got bored of gorgeous tropical beaches and decided to hit the rails. You rode the rails from Hawaii? Hehe, <laughs> yep. Real challenging trip for the first, for a first time hobo, but I made it through all right. Do you ever think of going back? They only got the one track there, so it was a one way trip. I might head back for a visit once to build a second one though. Huh, you live here? Not permanent like, but I've been camped out here a few days. 
All alone? Well, he used to be a bit livelier, but the boss is saying the railroad bull to run everyone off. Railroad bull? You mean like a cop? Yeah, you could say that. I think he's still prowling around out back if he cared to test your metal. I don't advise it, though. Is he packing heat? No, he's unarmed. But one of your arms might make a pretty good club. But one of your arms might make a pretty good club once he gets it off ya. Oh no. Any plans for the future? Well, word on the wall is there's a camp forming in Ocean City. I figured I'll mosey on over there once this rain lets up. Word on the wall. I've never heard a phrase like that. Is it, like, through the grapevine? Heh, similar, similar. I see. I'm taking my leave. How is Knapsack? Ask him about it. Is this Knapsack your only luggage? Oh, it ain't mine. It's been here since before I arrived myself. Nobody's been able to work out how to open the dang thing. If you can figure out the trick, you're welcome to it. You inspect the bag, it appears to be latched shut with one of those puzzles made out of bent nails and steel wire. How he wasn't... How he wasn't just harmonica and Dixie. I'll leave it alone for now. It's... There's a partially full gas... Yeah, there's a partially full gas can nested in the piles of garbage plate. You, I have a full gas can. Oh, I need more muscle. There's got to be a way for me to, like... Surely there has to be a way for me to increase my mysticality and my, all of my stats. Surely. Read it. I need more mysticality. This one boosts my muscle. Actually, one sec. How much muscle did this need? Two more. Oh, okay, so I can just eat the jerk. Oh, what was that perk? Slightly clammier. <laughs> okay. Oh, hang on. There's something shiny in the pile. It's an old class ring. There's a carving on the trunk of this tree. It's a, it says, How he loves playing the harmonica. Aww. Somebody has placed a sheet of filthy l l linoleum on the ground here in an effort to lend legitimacy to this <laughs> hot dog kitchen. There's a stew in this pot beyond health, but you could probably salvage the ladle to do so. I got. Hey, this isn't a ladle, it's a spatula. No wonder the stew's so messed up. You got item grimy spatula. Deals your mysticality plus two physical damage. This spatula has never been. Has been used hard and cleaned never. What's in the fridge? There's got to be something in the fridge. One of those newfangled indoor outdoor refrigerators. Somebody left a perfectly good mason jar full of gasoline in here. I got uh, more. <laughs> I got a 133% full can of gas. Oh, hang on. There's this big fella here. Uh oh, it's the railroad ball, how we told you about. Although, railroad minotaur will probably make it more accurate. One sec. Uh, muscle plus physical. Where's that spatula? Because I got good mysticality, so. I'm gonna take the ball by the horns. It's got 7 HP, so if I. Toot. And then I whack him with the spatula. I don't even whack him, I just wiggle it out. Okay, so if I hit him with a rock, I can just take him down. Okay. I like this so far. Boy, bruv, you got a license for that. I do, in fact. Thank you, David. A 1911 fork milk crate for wheels. Oh, that mob will never really seem to take off. Oh, look, there's gas on it. Help yourself. 166% full can of gas. Hold on a 
Alright, so hold, if I give this ring to this guy, I may be able... So you're moving out? Uh, yep, I finished packing, so now I'm just waiting for the movers to come in and take this last load of stuff. You've got movers coming in the middle of the night? Nine in the morning. But I went and packed my teddy bear and forgot which box he's in. Can't sleep. I see. Why are you leaving? Well, my daughter went off to college, so there's nothing keeping me here. I never practically cared for farming anyhow. Just kind of fell into it, you know? So I reckon I'd take the opportunity to retire and travel a bit, see what kind of trouble I can get up to. Yeah, nice. So what's your story? What are you doing out on a night like this? I got a letter from my Uncle Murray. It sounded urgent, so I hopped on a bus to Ocean City. I ain't sure how to tell you this, but uh, you got a ways to go yet. Yeah, the bus ran out of gas, so the driver sent me to scavenge, some, scavenge for some more. I gotcha. Well, I think there's some old gas can in the barn out back. You're welcome to it. Thanks. Gotta warn you, though. I'll have to fight my daughter for it. What? Well, technically I should say my daughter's monster. What? It's a thing my daughter Simone built. What? See, my kids are real tech technical bees. She built an auto ominous rob robo contraption to help with the plowing and harvesting and like. Worked real nice, too. Wow. Wow. Problem is, after she left, it blew a watsy tube and got violent. I'm pretty sure the... With mach I'm pretty good with machinery, but when it comes to these newfangled electrics, I might as well be tr a dog trying to peel pl read Plato, so I locked it in the barn. Ah, I see. You're welcome to try your hand get... Yeah, you're welcome to try your hand against it if you're, if you've mind, yeah, man, I, it's amazing that I built a channel like mine on narration when I can barely start reading my, when I can barely read. You're welcome to try your hand against it if you've mind to, but please be careful, it's got a lot of sharp bits on it. Here's the key. Uh, do you not want, uh, I found you a ring. You hand it to him and looks over. Hey, it's a 17 SIT ring. I got one of the... I got one of these in a... False emerald. But not a false sapphire one like this. These are the one. Uh, these are the ones they gave to the junior varsity pigskins. I had a little enchantment on them. So the, so the kids wouldn't get quite so many concussions. <laughs> Probably worn off by now. Is it worth a thing? Nah, uh, not a jeweler or a pawn, pawn broker or anything like that. Eight carat gold and a stone made of glass. A collector would give you 30 meat for it, such as myself, if you're interested in selling it. Sure, 30 meat sounds fine. Ah, oh, I probably should have. No, I should have just given it to him. I would have got some XP out of that. Tell them about the scarecrow. I uh, had to beat up your scarecrow, sorry. Well, I was leaving it behind anyhow, but why'd you go and do a thing like that for? It shot me. With a gun. Oh, alright. Yeah, that's perfectly reasonable then. <laughs> okay, let's go in the barn. You heave the doors open. Go in. Ugh. Ugh, you have a reoccurring nightmare about searching for something in one of these. <laughs> Cabinet is rusted shut. Force it open. It's just a painting of a bunch of tools. Watering trough. For some long gone livestock. A real nice, nice barrel, but it'd be nice if it had anything in it. Based on the arrangements of the objects around it, you conclude that this machine is for turning hay bales into loose hay. That's whizzing around. You're not going to get that past that thing without destroying it first. Destroy it then! Uh, oh, it's only got four HP. Be gone, rock. Boom. Heath the Sparrow grows stronger. Rest in parts. Uh, nothing. It's a workbench for welding. Search it. 
Went through a lot to gain access to this cat. Accept your reward. You'd go up there if it weren't for your hay fever and your falling out of lofts fever. <laughs> oh, I got something that increased to my moxie, don't I? Ah, oh, but no, I need... I'll get some... How much XP do I have? I don't have enough to upgrade anything, damn it. Oh, I'll just... Uh... Let's see if we something else. Okay, where's my moxie? Cursed by an absence of crackers, you eat the cheese loaf with your bare hands. In the end, you are uncleath both, in, both inside and out. From the high fat content of that cheese adjacent snack you ate, has made you a better relax. Oh. Alright. Got some welding gloves. Maybe then I can actually kill that little dust devil now. Come on. What's this? There's a weird... There's a weird plaque where Lydia was standing. Read it. Historic site at this exact spot on the 13th of October 1908, the state's first mass-produced automobile, a Ford Model T purchased by Hiram O'Cullis, accidentally, st accidentally struck and killed the state's first hitchhiker, <laughs> Lydia, but... Oh! So apparently that woman you talked to a few minutes ago had been dead for exactly 20 years. Good. Swell. Everything about this, this, this is great and you aren't, re you aren't regretting this trip before you've even arrived. Go on, go on about your normal non-haunted non day. Oh no. Okay, so there was... I know I've got all the gas, but there was something in here that required mysticality. There's something else again in Mr. County, isn't it? I'm eating my pears. So now I find a few more. There's an engraved plate on the side of it that says Helico Portable Gasoline Generator. Ah, it, ah it's a machine for generating portable gasoline. Harvest some. You extract today's crop of gasoline from this miraculous machine. <laughs> well, I've got plenty of gas, so hopefully... Now, I just noticed the sign said now with extra lead. Hmm, this turtle seems to be heading to Ocean City too. At this rate, you might beat... Ba I'm taking the turtle with me. Oh, I get a turtle! Guys, I get a turtle! Okay, there's only one thing, and one thing only, we can name this turtle. No, no, it's, I'm not naming it Jeff, it's green. And who else was green on a stream? Do you remember? That's, that's a name. That's a name. Yeah, you guys in chat are getting it. Now nah, you're getting it. Ringo it is. You got an item. Ringo the turtle. A, tur a turtle is like a slow bandage. Each round of combat, Rin Ringo heals a random wounded ally. Ooh. Now I've got all this. Um, Let's have a crack at killing that dust devil. I might be able to get enough... XP to actually beat. Oh, what was it? I'm trying to. Uh, what is it I'm trying to do? So, what was it that required the five? I thought the turtle healed me. No, hold on.
Hold on. I'm, I thought the turtle healed me. Let's. I'm trying this again. Where's my turtle? Right, fine. I'm just gonna throw a rock at him. Just flip him again. Damn it! Oh, I have to equip him. I have to equip Ringo. That's why. God damn. There's nothing else on this bookshelf. So I throw the rock, boom, and then I... He did nothing! He did nothing. Come on, this... Really? God's sake. I'm gonna try shooting him. Gotta try the gun. Oh, it only does one damage. Great! Tan bloody fast stick. Because my turtle doesn't heal me fast enough to beat this dust devil. And I don't have enough XP to bump up, like, my mysticality to do enough damage. Oh, screw it. I'll probably do another playthrough of this at some point in my own time. Time to grind. I can't grind, though. So. It's the bus driver. Hey there, friend. Any luck with the gas? You sure to drive your, your gas can? Well, his gas can. Well, uh, this can doesn't usually hold that much gas. Not sure how he did that. Well, whatever. Are you ready to hit the road? Uh, not quite. So you're the no stone unturned type, eh? I respect that. Just let me know when you're ready. No rush. I'll be right here, waiting for the pouring rain. No, I don't even get any XP for that. Oh, stop it. Now let's go. He takes the can and empties it into the bus's tank, and with that, we're on our way. All aboard. You climb back on the bus and return to your seat, and soon you're dozing off to the sound of rain spattering on the wind on the window beside you. Unfortunately, it's barely an approximation of sleep. The sort of sleep that you slip into so gradually that you don't even know when you're asleep until something wakes you up. Blanket Street! And then you realise that your meandering thoughts of the past few minutes have been utterly strange, shadowy tendrils of whispering ideas. Hey kid, this is your stop, right? That are now totally forgotten. Uh, what? All ashore, man. All ashore, what's going ashore? Thanks for travelling with Willis Busco. Disembark. Oh. Well, I'm not going back there then. Cola Wars surplus. Army surplus, but it's closed for the night. Sales sale going out of business. Going seems inaccurate. Keep out. Probably nothing you want in there anyway. Oh, gentleman with a top hat. Hobo seems wholly un unperturbed by the rain. Nice weather we're having. 
He smiles when he then looks up at you and lets the rain splash his face for all. Eh, suits me just fine, I guess. A wise man once said, the rain falls on the poor men and rich men alike. Was that before umbrellas were invented, or...? Name's Gus, by the way. I'm Mike. Pleased to meet you, Mike. Say, you wouldn't have a couple of meat to spare, would you? I sure do. Thank you very much, Mike. Old Gus won't forget your kindness. You bet. Take her easy, Gus. There's nothing in that direction except for the road you arrived on, and walking all the way back there probably isn't a good use of your time right now. Murray's Antiques. The bell to the door. The bell over the door jangles as you walk into Murray's Antiques. The young woman at the counter looks up as you enter. Oh, hi, you must be Mike. We don't get many customers at this time of night. Or at all, really. That's me. Were you expecting me? Yeah, Murray didn't say much about you, but he gave me the, that letter to mail. My name's Jessica. Oh, jeez, you're soaking wet. Come on in and we'll get you a towel. You walk over, uh, you walk over to the counter trying not to drip on any vintage bric-a-brac as Jessica grabs a... Th a, th a threadbare towel from the, from a shelf and pulls the tag off before tossing it to you. Thanks. Is Uncle Murray here? His letter wasn't very specific. He isn't. You said that in a kind of ominous way. Where is he? Oh man, my throat's getting so dry. I wish I knew. He had a line on another artifact and said it was going to be a tough one. I told him he should get some backup, but he wasn't going to wait. He just wrote that letter and told me to mail it if he doesn't come back. Yes, there's something missing. Is there something missing? I'm there. Is there something I'm missing here? This is an antique shop, right? You don't make. You make trying to. Yeah. You make trying to talk great Aunt Ruthie into selling her mother's Chesterfield sound like a deep, like a deadly spy mission. Yeah, this is going to take some explaining. Well, I'm definitely intrigued now. We don't have a lot of time just now, but follow me and I'll give you a quick stretch. Okay, Jessica leads you into the back, into a back room furnished with some desks and some strange looking machinery. Welcome to our back office, the hub of our little operation. I'm guessing by operation you're talking about something other than antiques. Well, yes and no. See, a few years ago, Murray found out that there's a bunch of antiques circulating that are, well, hinky would be a real understatement. Hinky? Murray called them tainted, dark magic, real bad mojo, you know, cursed. Oh, for a second I thought you were making bathtub gin or something. It's no joke. It's no joke. That's what our real job is here. An antique store is just... Well, not exactly a front. We find a lot of regular antiques too, and selling them keeps us in scratch. But really, we're trying to hunt down all those evil doodads and neutralize them so nobody gets hurt. And Uncle Murray went out to go to get one and never came back. That's the long and short of it, yep. What do you say? Are you in? Absolutely, I'm always up for a crazy adventure. Well, yeah, I can't just leave him in... Lurch like this. I don't like this. I'm always up for a crazy adventure. A bizarre adventure. With with Jessica. Jojo. It's Oh god, it's Jojo's bizarre adventure. Great. You hear the shop door opening, and after a moment, a goblin pokes her head into the office. Hello? Oh, hey, that's swell timing. Hey, Gabby. Murray's sister... Murray's sister... Murray's sister's kid just showed up. Come meet him. Hi, Gabby. Pleased to meet you. I go by her, actually. I go by them, actually. Hi, Gabby. Pleased to meet you. Hi, hello. The pleasure is all Gabby's. Gabby, would you... Gabby, would you be a dear and carry his luggage to Murray's room and grab some blankets and stuff out of the cupboard so he, c he can sleep there till we find Murray? You've gotten it! Gabby picks up your suitcase and carries it through the door to in the, in the back of the room. Great, I could, I could really use some sleep. This desk is a mess, ask Jessica, ask Jessica about it. Whose desk is this? Murray's. I keep nagging at him to straighten it up, 
up before someone bumps into it and we have to call up the National Guard to dig them out of the avalanche. With curse-proof shovels and squads of exorcists handy. Anyways, best not to mess with that. Will do. I mean, won't. You're not sure what this clock is telling, but it sure ain't time. Messages then. There's nobody you need to call right now. There's nobody at this, at this desk. Ask Jessica about it. Hey Jessica, whose desk is this? Charles Wallace, our handyman. He's up fixing a leak on the roof right now, but he'll be back down later tonight. I see. You don't have time to be playing games right now. <laughs> you can't even hazard a guess as to what this contraption does. A modern radio stands here in defiance of the concept of antiques. A white cat is snoozing on an old towel. What's the cat's names? Calliope. I, I feel like I've definitely pronounced that wrong. Calliope. Murray got her a couple of years ago. Scritch behind the cat's ears. You give Calliope a good scritching, but she doesn't react at all. Why doesn't Calliope like me? Yeah, she'll warm up eventually. Try, try giving her some sardines. She loves those. Do you have any sardines? Nope, we're all out. You can just get some tomorrow. More tomorrow. They have them at Cola Wars Surplus next door. Okay. You wonder where this door leads? You open the door and there's just a brick wall behind it. Apparently it goes nowhere. <laughs> it's just a brick wall. This is your new bedroom. Apparently you hear... Uh, this is your new bedroom, apparently. You hear Gabby bustling around in there, making the bed and such. Go in. Hang on a sec. You can't go to sleep yet. I'm pretty sure I can. I bet I could do. I bet I could do it right here while I'm still standing up. Haha, <laughs> Well, I hate to spring this on you, but there's something we need to do before the night's over. Sure, I'd be happy to help. You know those cursed artifacts I was talking about? Since info on them is sketchy, we've been working on a machine that can detect them with radio waves. I call it the Detectotron One Thousand. We've just gone up and running since Murray left, and it's. T uh, and it turned out there's a tainted thing practically right on our doorstep. Hmm, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, it's not great. I was going to have Gabby go get it. That's why she came over tonight. But since you turned up out of the blue... Well, I guess there's no time like the present. I'm probably not exaggerating when I say there is literally no ti time except for the present. What? As in, there might not be a future. You won't, go you won't have to go far. It's just down the other end of the block. If readings are right. There's a newspaper office that got shut down earlier this year. It should be in there. Well, Gabby will go with you. She's good in a fight. A fight? Oh, jeez. A fight? Heck yeah! Yeah, well, hopefully it won't come to that. But you know. But you never know. Hey, Gabby. Gabby reappears with an expectant grin. Go to the news office with Mike and help him get that hat, okay? Okay. Okay, Gabby is ready for action. Let's mosey. Gabby has joined you as a companion. Heave a grumpy sigh, let out a tired sigh, make an excited sigh. <laughs> make an excited sigh. Alright, fine. You said it's a hat? A cursed hat? According to the readout, yeah. A men's fedora, probably. And I'm supposed to, what, just break it and take it? Well, not break, exactly. I managed to f finagle a spare key out of the guy at the relative's office. I'm pretty sure that still counts as breaking and entering. You'll be in and out of back here in bed before you know it. I got newspaper office key. Jessica gave you this key to the newspaper office so you can retrieve a cursed hat for her. Sweet, let's do this. Gabby grins and gives you a thumbs up. Gab with Gabby. How are you doing, Gabby? The, the beans ease, Mike. Makes small talk. Uh, have you ever lived in Ocean City, Gabby? Oh yes, all of Gabby's life is there. Gabby's great, 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 great grand Gabby came and popped just some blocks from over there. Or to popping, as they would say. <laughs> wow, so your family's been here quite a while. Yes, 14 years. I'm not going to keep talking. My throat is getting a lot drier. <laughs> So what's this place? Four lease. <laughs> the gnosis on the door just says please. I think this door sells broken glass and drafts. 
mm, this building looks perfectly solid. Maybe it's just the people renting it out that were condemned. <laughs> this trash... This trash's reach has exceeded its tra its can's grasp. Given the current conditions, Dark and Storm, you probably shouldn't wander into alleys. Ocean City Watchful Eye. Okay, it's time to bust here and find a curse hat. Hold on. Securberus. Building and loan. It's late. The bank's closed. You can't see anything interesting within walking distance in that direction. Okay. You take a deep breath and unlock the door. You give Ga Gabby the key for safekeeping. Go inside. Coffee. There's a little bit of very, very old coffee left in this per percolator. Pouring yourself this cup of coffee is just the first step in a short, nasty journey. <laughs> You've got to hide some nasty old coffee. A few months ago, somebody decided this coffee wasn't good enough to drink. You apparently disagree with that decision. You see a thin three-ring binder on this desk. Take it. You take Pneumatic Tube System Operator's Manual. This is a reference manual for a city-wide network of pneumatic tubes. Looks like the I had some state-of-the-art delivery infrastructure. There's a crumpled up pink slip on this desk. Carver, I can't believe I have to tell you this, but it is against company policy for an employee at to steal the printing press. <laughs> you are fired. You are so fired, I would need a new phrase to describe it. I'm giving you the axe, and if I see your face in here again, I will both give you, you the axe and set you on fire. <laughs> Grover Burgess, editor-in-chief. P.S. How did you even lift it? You must have had, what, five accomplices? Unbelievable. You make a mental note to never pick a fight with this carver person. <laughs> how do you steal a printing press? This desk has met a violent end. Search the wreckage. Nothing but a pile of homemade toothpicks. Draw this one slightly ajar. Ew, you got some nasty old leftovers. You don't know what went into this bag, but you know that the only thing that's ever going to come out of it is congealed mass of foul goo. Yuck. Um, is there a way I can turn off my mouse? One sec. There we are, capture cursor. Okay, is that better? I'm, I'm waggling my mouse along my screen. And it's not showing up. Yay. Okay, now that hopefully won't irritate you all for like the rest of your life. Okay. Uh, there's a half-finished document in the typewriter. Read it. Government corruption at all-time high. The government has once again slashed funding to city services and social programs, citing waste, but without offering any supporting f figures or explaining where the funds have been re reallocated to. Additionally, anonymous sources report to... It cuts off abruptly, maybe as, as a result of the pink slip next to the typewriter. Read the slip. Curtis, if I've told you once, I've told you a hundred times, not enough people buy the paper anymore to keep the lights on in this joint. Electricity is expensive because it is a very recent innovation. As such, fully as such, fully half of your salary is paid by government subsidies. This is to, this is to say that the hand that feeds you is the hand that you keep biting. We go way back, buddy, but if you don't give but you've given me no choice. Clean out your desk and scram. Oof. Oh hey, it's one of those new new arcane press newsfeed things. High tech, gaze into it. Babe Ruth gets haircut. Barber says you'd thi think he could have left a better tip. Today's list of band dances: <laughs> the Chutney Slider, the Dirty Dirty Blitz, and the Upside Down Tango. Uh, is this just? It's just randomly generated news nonsense. Okay. There's a half-finished letter in this typewriter. The letter reads, Reginald, I think Burgess is on to us. We've gotten careless. In fact, maybe I shouldn't be typing this out, <laughs> out as a letter instead of just talking to you in person. Why am I doing this? Meet me un under the water cooler this afternoon. Ah, crap, here comes Burgess with a pink slip. Sincerely. It doesn't say who it's from. The writer must have gotten fired before they could type their name. Also, under the water cooler? What's that all about? Pink slip on this desk. Hinden. 
I am not paying you to publish cockab cockamane conspiracy theories. In fact, I'm not paying you at all anymore. Clean out your desk and hit the road. P.S. P.S. Do you like the word cockamame? Cockamammy? Cockamimi? It's a weird word. Cockamine. That's cockamine. That, that's whatever. It's a slang term I coined. It means ridiculous or <laughs> implausible. I think it's really going to catch on. <laughs> Whoever worked this desk forgot their cufflinks. I got some reporter's cufflinks. The left one is engraved. Always check. The right one says your sources. Really makes you think. Can I equip those already already equipped? Well, instead of gloves, which gives me gloves. Okay. Handwritten notes on this desk. The note says Robinson's. First Hinden, then Carver. Who's next? Venable says if Burgess comes for him, he's going to karate chop his desk in half. Sincerely, Curtis Curtis. P.S. What's a karate? You see a corner of a note sticking out from under the desk bolter. The note says, Tucker, I got you that bottle you wanted. I stuck it under the water cooler where Burgess can't find it and, and rats us out to the profies. Beck, under the water cooler, eh? Surely it's not still there, but it couldn't hurt to check. Where's the water cooler? That's coffee. Newspaper archives. Uh, okay. It's a big heavy water cooler and it's got something to hide. Move it. A trap door? What? There are fish people down here? Why are there fish people? It's an underground press. Literally, there's still a newspaper left in it. Take the paper. You got underground newspaper. It's printed in a secret underground newspaper office. What's that all about? It's more of a manifesto, specifically calling out the government's suppression of the local newspaper but and the importance of the free press. There's also a... An amusing but puzzling cartoon about a dog r arresting a mouse for throwing a brick at a cat's head, which the cat didn't seem to mind? Interesting. It's a calendar from 11 years ago. Take a look. There's a huge black skull scrawled on July, t July 22nd, 1917. Huh, what happened on July 22nd, 1917? Control panel for the pneumatic juice system. Check, Check it out. The control panel has a green button, a red button, a big lever, a knob with a bunch of letters on it, and a series of coloured lights that are all currently off. Pull the lever. Push the green button. The green button makes a satisfying click and you hear a motor starting somewhere. Consult the manual. Start instruction. Press the green power on button. Uh, pull the pump engage lever. Adjust the suction rate according to the pressure dial. If a red indicator light is on, set the suction dial to A. Okay. So pull the lever. You pull the lever with a very pleasing ka-chunk, and the motor noise w turns into a sort of loud, windy whine. A yellow light starts glowing on the console. Uh, something about a yellow light? There's, there's nothing about a yellow light. Why? There's nothing about a yellow light. Why isn't there any music? If a red light is on, so, uh, turn the knob. Uh, I'm, what, uh, you click the dial into place and the noise turns into a sort of shuddering growl for a second before an orange light briefly flashes and the entire machine shuts down. Well, shoot.
Oh well, what's to these fish people? Something around, something around here seems pretty fishy, and it's the, and it's these two moist fellas standing between you and that abandoned hat over there. <laughs> Investigate. Not wanting to get any closer to them, you choose to interpret investigative as squint at them from a short distance away. Which is probably for the best, as it might be bad for your mental state if you see them in too much detail. These humanoid creatures are between 5 and 6 feet tall, hard to judge because of their hunched over posture and covered with scales that glisten slickly in dim light. Though you can't tell if this is a natural luster or due to being covered with oily sewer filth. More notably, well, more notably, of course, is the fact that they have a huge fish. They have huge fish heads. Sorry if I blurred. Sorry if I buried the lead there, but you know, saving the dramatic part for last and all. Their huge, bulging, round eyes glare at you, you know, out of the darkness, faintly luminous, like radium dial, like radium watch dials, and they hiss and gurgle at you between ra rows of pointed shark-like teeth, gill slits. <laughs> On the side of their head, open and close, like thin, wet mouths gasping for air, or whispering terrible secrets, whichever seems more likely to you. Gross. It appears that they're very displeased to see you, but are smart enough to hold off from attacking you until they've judged how much of a threat you are. No thank you. I am not dealing with that. Well, there was a date that you can check on dates here, it said. What date would you like to look for? Ooh, I have several dates. Uh, look at this one first. You find something interesting. Tragic accidents certain to have no consequences. Tragedy occurred yesterday evening when Hiram O. Crullins, owner of the first mass-produced commercial automobile registered in the state, accidentally struck and killed the state's first... Oh no, this was the woman I spoke to earlier. I hear a person standing at the side of the road attempting to solicit transportation from passing motorists. Fortunately, Mr. Collins, for Mr. Collins, the notion that vengeful spirits of the dead might be, might haunt the places of their demise in murderous phant phantasmagoric rage has been rejected by modern science as rather unlikely, wouldn't you say? Unlikely? Sure. Yeah, uh... uh the top story from that date is the Ocean City... Uh, controllers passing of an overly complicated sidewalk right-of-way policy that outlawed street street-side newspaper vending machines and limited the maximum allowed width of newsstands to four feet. The story continues to say that watchful eye management raised concerns about loss of revenue and the, and the uh, controller made a vague promise to divert city funds to make up for any future shortfall. Well, it looks like it worked out great for everyone. Do I have any more dates I'd like to look through? Ah! There's got to be a way I can... Hang on. Now we read this. There has to be a way I can... Nope, didn't have to do that. There has to be a way I can defeat these fish people without murdering them. Oh! Godzilla Boy donated some money. Thank you. Are you going to play Transport Fever 2? I might. One day I might. Oh, there's a new attic tube thing over him. Okay, so I can just suck him up. Okay, so push the green button. Pull the lever. A yellow light. Uh, push the red button. Not what I meant to do. Let's try that again. Uh, green button, pull the lever, push the green button, because I've got to turn the knob. A. Nope. Pull the lever. Nope. Press the green button, pull the lever, turn the knob. To B. Consult the manual. What is it with... Ah. Oh! Because it's a yellow light. It'll be somewhere between... 
Oh, it's blue and green that make yellow, so it's... Hold on. Red indicator light on through. Right. Turn the knob. I just tried C between D and E. If I hit F. Uh, why? It doesn't help that it's completely silent as well. I, I've got music and everything turned on. I just don't know why it isn't playing. Uh, so I need to t consult the manual. Okay. If a red light indicator on suction, the A. If the blue light is on, it's E. I'm just done off a D. So I turn the knob. I haven't tried C yet. Oh, there we go. Well, there go the fish people. Well, someone's going to get some very strange mail. And how? What were those things? What were they doing down here? Were they trying to start an under underwater newspaper? That wouldn't work, the ink would smear. You're right. Must be the hat Jessica wants to recover. Terribly cursed fedora. A simple black fedora. It doesn't look cursed, but a palpable aura of menace about it. Very old manco. What? An ominous, vaguely person shaped stain on the ground. Ominous. Everything good, Gabby? Sound, it sounds like a cat meowing. Chew the fat. A real firecracker in a fist fight, huh, Gabby? Yeah, I'm not gonna keep chit chatting. Finally, some noise. Some background noise. What a. Can I equip this? Ooh! Fashionable. Hold on, where's. The homeless guy still here? Yes, he is. Probably worn by a redditor. Yeah, it probably was. It's a cursed fedora. Well, fedoras as a hat in general are cursed. It's a trash can full of trash. Dig through it. You found a discarded bottle of cologne. Increases your stench armor. This bottle of cologne was inexpensive to begin with, and throwing it away didn't make it any more valuable. Oh, that's a person. Here's the hat. Looks like you found the hat. I found a hat. Guess it's the one you meant. Doesn't look unusual, though. Unusual, although. Well, it does creep me out a bit. I really can't put my finger on why. I know what you mean. Feels kind of like you have a headache, except you don't actually. More like a feeling of dread, like something terrible is about to happen, but I don't know what it is yet. Well, that, that is definitely not related to the fact that I need you to take care of that hat and go sit in that machine over there. Uh, why? That's our uncursing machine. Got to get the curse off that hat, right? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. But uh, what? Can't we just put the hat in the machine? Why do I need to be involved? Because the machine needs a mind to guide the uncursing process. Together you'll lift the curse from the hat and transform it into, into a sort of allegorial dream space that the machine can transfix. Uh, what? Sorry, I know it's a lot. So, let me please rephrase. Ahem. The uncursing machine use your sub uses your sub 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 the uncursing machine uses your subconscious mind to drive a wedge between an item and its curse. The item is cleansed. Uh, the item is cleansed relatively easily, but that doesn't neg negate the curse fully. Once separated from the item, the machine sorts the cur stores the curse and allows you to physically project into it to try and resolve them the metaphorical scenario at the core of its existence. That's where things can get a little weird. 
Yeah, I know it sounds crackers, but you'll have to give it a try to understand. I am going into, uh... I'm going into the curse land, apparently. I don't know who it is. Must be Charles Wallace. Speak to him. You must be Charles Wallace. I'm Mike. That I am. Pleased to meet you, Mike. What do you do around here? Oh, I'm your general handyman sort of stuff. I keep the lights on and the water running. Built the Detectortron and Uncursing Machine too. Wow, that's some real high-tech wizardry. That's nothing. Let me ask you something. How does that weird Uncursing Machine work? Oh, I only built the thing. I can't begin to tell you how it works. The innards are all wired up to a little porcelain cat figure that Murray found somewhere. Well, that's weird. In a real traditional sense, yep. Hmm, anything else I can help you with? Not right now. Sit in the uncursing machine. You sit in the chair, which is surprisingly comfortable, and you pull the weird metal dome thing down over your head. What would you like... Uh, what would you like to uncurse today? The terribly cursed fedora. No sooner have you sat down and... Sat down than the machine with a hiss... Pos uh, positively whiffs the fedora straight up into the dome. The hat rattles around in there like an... Ang there. The hat rattles around in there angrily like a snake in a cement mixer, and after a good loud minute, flops limp and wet onto your lap. Whatever ominous energy once possessed the terribly cursed hat is gone. It is now simply a terrible hat. You got an item, uncursed fedora. But the curse itself still lives, transfixed as a dreamlike construct within the machine. Now how do I get rid of that curse? Hmm, see, curses are like energy, Mike. They can't be created or destroyed. Only changed. Can't remember who said that. Isaac Newton? Isaac Newman? Newton? Newton Newman, yeah. That machine knows how to take care of a curse. Yeah, that machine knows how to take a curse from one object and put it and put it on itself. But as for how you change a curse, well, I don't know. That's some uh, that's some higher consciousness spiritual stuff. I don't know much about that. I'm more of a Newton Newman sort of guy. The Fedora's cur <laughs> the Fedora's curse bounces around the innards of this machine, daring you to come project your consciousness inside of it. That sounds safe, I'll do it. What? I beg your pardon? Portal to another world is open, but the work here is not yet done. Oh, I have to figure out the curse. Federal Reserve. I'm a man with an act. I, I heard thy death, foul creature. Rest now. What is this? A tree felled before its time, a ground stained with sin. Yes. Et in Arcadia Ego. Even in Arcadia, there is death. Yes. Even in Paradise, there is a killer. This just got a whole lot ominous. I thought this was a comedy game. Why is this ominous now? Without know who I am and why I am here, I cutter. There has been... There has been a murder. What... What knoweth thou of murder? That I did not do the murder. And that is all. What mo have thee of What mo have thee for me? Only this I am one of three brothers. One of us is all one of us always tellens the truth. One of us all always lies. And the third of us does not does not speak an at all, but honks. If I find in thee a liar, there is no thing I can do to save in thee. I cut her. Thou art a serv thou art a servant of the wood. B blessed be her branches. Which tree has done the moida today? So I'm Why are all these trees wearing fedoras? <laughs> one tells truth, one of them tells lies, and the other only quacks. Something is rotten in the woods, Cutter. I, a murder. With the perversions at its source. Speak to me of perversions. 
I have nothing to say, for I do not tarry with them. What do thou tell in thee? I am troubled by the murder, but of it I know no, no thing. I warn thee, my forgiveness make, makes no round for liars. Thou wilt do what thou must, Cutter, I have no doubt. Thy brother, thy brother speaking of three brothers. One who always well, I is one who always tellens the truth, and one who does not speaken at all but honks. What speaking thee of? What speaking thee of this? I do not honken, sire. I swear in upon it. Thou never hast thou honken. Never, never. Tis a sin in mine eyes. This is this just got so surreal. The words make no sense. Big power in the wood today, Cutter. Ay, a tree has fallen in the forest, and it has made a sin. But not me a sinner, that I assure thee. Thou claim to be without sin? None of us are without sins, but mine do not turn to moider. Then whose? Look for my brother. Thou art speaking of three brothers, one who always lies, one who always tells the truth, and one who does not speak at all but honks. What speck in thee of this? This is fairy talk. No thing has honken in these lands since Mother Duck laid the big egg. No honken since then. No siree. Oh, Lord. Thou... Thou lie about honken. What say? Thy brothers honken not. Thou wouldst... Thou wouldst lie to the cutter of the wood. Thou wouldst do murder in these woods. Aye, thou hast right of it. I sought only to dis distract in thee whilst I make in thy escape. Goodbye, cutter. Do not run from me, tree. Thou do not run. Nay, I grow in. In one hundred years, I will hath grown so tall and strong. Thine axe may will never fell in thee. But I will not wait one hundred years. Die, murderer. That was... confusing. Big rot in the wood today, Cutter. And wait, what? No, that's not you. You don't talk like that. Dark thoughts of trees, axes, and bloody sap cling to your skin. You shake them off like dreadful cobwebs. 5 XP. Oh, Lord. You're not sure what just happened, but you turn over the form, the formerly terribly cursed fedora in your hands. You feel confident that the curse which you... Which... Uh, you feel confident that the curse which plagued the scra the starchy little felt thing is finally gone for good. You put the hat back on. It nearly sparkles now. Upgrade. Oh, it gives me more moxie and HP. Now that you've... Now that you've got... Uh, now all you've got to reckon with this... Uh, now you, uh, God, why... How is it that I can't speak? I, I narrate YouTube for a living and I can't speak. Now all you've got to reckon with is whether you're the kind of guy who goes around wearing a fedora. It'll do. So the hat's remo uh, curse is removed. Uh, it worked, I guess. Great, what was it like? I had some kind of crazy dream. I was a woodcutter, that was me, I guess. And talking trees, one of them had sinned. You know what? Never mind. Some kind of crazy dream is plenty for me. Okay, I'm gonna go in my room. There's a shelf of knickknacks and. <laughs> of knickknacks and tacoodle. Tacoodles. There's an old rag doll at the top. Must have been left by a previous tenant. Walk away from the shelf. A lot of empty space in here. You should try to acquire a bunch of random crap to cluster it up with. A television set. You've heard of these. Turn it on. Unfortunately, no shows have been invented yet. Simple writing desk with no chair or pens or paper or anything. Finally, some time to get unpacked and get some sleep. Open the trunk. What the... 
You stamp out the flames so that's total off. Everything everything you own has been reduced to ash. Everything? Everything except, bizarrely, a, the stamp from Murray's letter. The stamp from the letter Murray wrote to you is the only survivor of your luggage inferno. It's got a picture of a cute dog on it. Weirdly, it isn't even charred. Huh. You are very ready for this day to be over. A dream? What? I turned away to get a drink. What? These dorm beds are so uncomfortable. It's a post from my favourite literary ghost, Jacob Marley. Lots of people in this hall, in this hallway, it seems. Talk to one of them. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Do you know which locker is mine? I can't remember which locker is mine. Sorry, I don't. It's alright, I'll figure it out eventually, get into it. Uh, nice faces you got there. Sorry, I don't know. Six lockers, investigate. Check out the first one. You open the first locker to reveal a thriving colony of rats. You open the second locker is full of peanut butter. The third locker contains a tiny shrine to Babe Ruth. The fourth locker is empty. The fifth locker is filled with cookbooks, but they're all in French. The sixth locker opens into a vast, uncaring emptiness of space. You slam it shut quickly as to not suffocate. There is, open the seventh. There is no seventh one. I said check the seventh one. And I said there are only six lockers. Check the seventh locker. Now. Okay, geez, you look in the seventh locker. It's filled with old school papers. Look at the papers. They've got your name on them. They're your papers. Read one. How I Spent My Summer by Mike Hawk, age six. This summer I visited my Uncle Murray. Uncle Murray is funny, he knows magic. I had I had a fun time with Uncle Murray at the end. Look under the papers. Underneath the pile of school papers you find, ugh, an overdue library book. You check this book out 13 years ago and have spent the last 12 years and 50 weeks feeling slightly guilty about not returning it. I know which one is yours. It's the s no, the seventh one is mine. It's the second one. The second one is just full of peanut butter. That's colony of rats, peanut butter, boobre, babe Ruth, boobre. The hell am I on about? Locker is empty, and the sixth one is the vastness of space. I just gave him a peanut butter locker. Our founder, Branworth Govolculus. This lady looks friendly. Talk to her. Hello there. You must be. She flips through the book on her desk. Hi, here we are. Hawk. Mike Hawk. Yes, I am Mike Hawk. Uh, I'm your academic supervisor. It's time for you to choose your class, but I dropped out. In real life, certainly. You must, however, choose a class. Oh, I get it. This is why I pick a character class. I'm interested to be a pig skinner, a cheese wizard, or a jazz agent. There's advanced kicking and throwing this class of pig skinners. Uh, we have an overview of crud conjuring. This is for cheese wizards. And finally, uh, weird time signatures. This jazz wizard. I want to be a jazz agent. I want to be going around with cowboy bebop music blasted in the background. Masters of uh, syncopation and improvisation. Jazz agents use their rhythm and moxie to move through the world in style. In combat they attack with subtlety, weakening their enemies and stacking the odds in their favour over time. That sounds like what I want. Alright, you're a jazz agent. The name's Hawk. Mike Hawk. Now then, we've just the minor matter of your mirror. What? Now then, it's just the minor matter of your minor. It looks like you've already completed it. It doesn't say what you've studied. I minored in cryptobotany. I minored in applied insectology. I minored in the psychology of rocks. 
Oh, this just gets weirder and weirder the more I play it. Plant-based arcana? No. Um, applied insectology. Ah, so you're an expert in the bugs and the birds and the bees and such. Uh, let me see my other options. Psychology of rocks. Ah, psychologist. So you know a lot about rocks, gems, and their hopes and dreams. Ah, uh, I don't know what to go for. That little cryptobotany. Insectology and rocks. I'm tempted to just go for rocks. Just because I'm into jazz. I'm into rock. Jazz and rock. Oh, screw it. I'll go rocks. Psychogeologist. Oh, it's psych... Not psychologist. Psychogeologist. You know how to break open rocks and steal their secrets. Gather crafting ingredients from rocks. Well, with that, I believe we're done. Feel free to wake up and go about your day. Uh, how would I go about doing that? She smiles and points to the door on the right side of the screen. I mean, the right side of the dream. <laughs> Just go through. Thank you. Oh, that's the vastness of space. The nice lady at the desk says this is the door that leads back to your waking life. Go through. You awake feeling surprisingly refreshed. Yesterday's adventures leave you none worse for the wear. Your effects reset each day. Okay. I got an overdue library book. You didn't feel like reading it when you were in grade school. You didn't feel like reading it now. Okay, then. Postmark says... The postmark says... The 18th of April, 1906, even though Jessica says she knows it. Oh, I can go to the... I can go to the thingy place and check out the date. See what happened. And still nothing on TV? Okay, still nothing on TV. On the shelf. Nothing. Morning, Mike. How'd you sleep? Wait, why are you still wearing those wet clothes? All my other clothes burned up in a, f in a freak luggage fire. Ah, oh, jeez, that's weird and unfortunate. You seem less surprised by that than I do. We've kind of gotten accustomed to weird and unfortunate stuff happening around here. You could pick some clothes out from the... Ugh. You could pick some... Uh, you could pick out some clothes from the sh up out front, if you don't mind looking like someone's dusty old grandpa. I'll be alright, thank you anyway. Well, once you've... Well, once you've got the sleep out of your eyes, you've, you've got another mission for you. Another cursed thing? Uh, yeah, I've had my eye on it for a while, but it keeps moving around. Mostly the readings put it at a local, at the local speakeasy at the back of an alley, at the other end of the block. Uh, the artifact isn't there right now, but that's where I'd start looking. Maybe you can pick up some more clues. Okay, what am I looking for? It appears to be a watch of some kind. A pocket watch, or maybe a wristwatch. Can't be certain. A watch in the speakeasy. Battle uh, in the alley. Got it. Anything else? You'll need the password for the speakeasy. It's fiddlesticks. Also, let me let me give this to you. Uh, le, uh. Also, let me give you this to-do list. It's enchanted in a way that to show whatever's written on the chalkboard here. Item to-do list. Pretty neat trick. Here's some meat for expensive too. The army surplus next door should have everything you need in case things get rough. Gain 100 meat. That's ominous, but thanks. Cat sleeping on the towel. Just a brick wall. Okay. Finally, chapter one. Welcome to Ocean City. Whoa. Almost got run over again. Uh, first of all, before I do that, I'm going to go check out the date on this stamp. Uh, what was it? It was 19. Frisco Frights. This morning at uh, 5.12 Pacific Standard Time, the city of Frisco was rocked by a massive earthquake, the magnitude of which science has not yet agreed upon a method of measuring. The initial death toll is estimated to be as many as 500, although that number will certainly increase due to the fires currently raging across the city. 
There have also been strange scattered reports from witnesses who claim that uh, to have observed unusual phenomenon such as beams of black light, subsonic laughter, and soul-rending nightmares. Though our editors wish to point out that Frisconians are known for their fondness of psychedelic intoxicants. You're really starting to enjoy doing this kind of research. You got a perk, Newshound. The XP for learning new things from the newspaper archive. That's a good job. So it was down this alley I needed to go. You weave between various trash cans and piles of uncanned trash until you reach a serious looking door. Knock. A little panel slides open near the top of the door and narrowed eyes regard you through it. Uh, fiddlesticks. Okay, come on in, but you better not be, be a foe. I'm not. Scout's honor. Ooh. This is jazzy. My man's got the big brain. Don't bother him, he's, he's bouncing. This guy loves hitting those spoons together. A milky-eyed sot. He turns your head towards you and smiles. I'll buy him a drink. After a few moments and a few sips, he clears his throat and speaks. The lake is deep enough to drown dreams, but not the sins of the grandfather. I... Alright then, I'm gonna uh, leave him to it. Wait, aren't these as fishmen from the Watchful Eye basement? He's <laughs> so used to not thinking about where things go once you put them in a tube. Say hello. Hey, you remember me from the tube? Beat it, bub, we're off the clock. I didn't realise you could talk. I can, I can talk about anything you like. Dickens, Flaube, Bro Brontes. What can you tell me about the Dickens? I think his book his books are too long. What can you tell me about the Flaubert? The Flaubert? I think his books are too long. What can you tell me about the Brontes? I think their books are too long. What books are the right length? None. Okay, this is helpful. Enjoy your drinks. This guy doesn't care about anything except the bass line. This lady seems to be dancing to a different song than the other people. This guy has been infected with Charleston fever. These people are obviously on a first date and you shouldn't bother them. It's a weird... It's weirdly responsible of this illegal poison dispensary to have a first aid kit. Let's see what's in there. I got a gals pad and girls pad. Uh, for the best aid is often the first one. Restores 5 HP and removes bleeding. Uh, activated charcoal briquette. All the all of the curative powers of activated charcoal now in a convenient pillow shape. Nice. There's a door here. Open it. One burge must be barred from the other side. Well, a spittoon! The spittoon has been placed at a really challenging height. Maybe you can ask a bartender about it some other time. No! I want the spittoon! I've played West of Loathing. I want the spittoon. <laughs> he looks up at you as, a pro as you approach but doesn't stop shaking. Hello, he grins. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. Welcome to Oliver's place. My name's Mike. Whatever you say, baby. Are you Oliver? Oh, heck no. I'm the fancy Dan the Cocktail Man. Pleased to meet you, Dan. Hey, do you happen to know what time it is? Perhaps because you have a watch on you? Sorry, baby. The only one around here who carries a pocket watch is the owner. Is the owner, Oliver Gluck. And he left about an hour ago to pick up our latest shipment of hooch. From who? From whom, baby? Before I was Fancy Dan the Cocktail Man, I was Fancy Dan the English teacher. Sorry, from whom? From the mob guys. We always get it from. Whither went Oliver? Fancy Dan smiles. The new f the the old refrigerator factory. I see. How do I get there? Dan grabs a cocktail napkin and hands it to you. Uh, thanks. Haha, <laughs> wrong napkin. Here. He takes that napkin back and grabs a different one with a couple of icons scrawled on it. Take the napkin, mapkin. You got an item, Ocean City 
napkin map. As you take the napkin, Dan points out, points at one of the icons on it. We're here behind Murray's store on Puckett Street, if you go out of the alley and head straight to the edge of the napkin. Can't miss the factory. Location unlocked, Plunkett Street. Location, Fridge Factory. You now have a map of the area. You can open it by clicking M. Thanks, Dan. Don't mention it, baby. Want a drink for the road? First one's on the house. Sure. What do you guys have to drink around here? Beer. I'll have a beer, then. Excellent choice. Keep things simple. The bartender pours your beer. Bottoms up. You drink the beer. You drink the beer. You've had better beer, but you've definitely had worse. Gain an effect. Beer buzz. Yay, more HP. Ask Dan about the spittoon. Hey Dan, your spittoon is kind of inconvenient. Nah, baby. Nah, nah, baby. That spittoon isn't for spitting in. That's gone out of style now that mass-produced cigarettes are readily available anyway. No, that's a bona fide historical artifact. What, really? That's right. Belonged to a famous adventurer from Frisco just before the turn of the century. Really? Who? Well, nobody's exactly sure. A lot of people think it belonged to Mumfla Fumperdink. <laughs> Are referencing Markiplier now? <laughs> really? It's a strong theory, because if there's one thing we knew about that cat, is that he loves spittoons. But other people say that it belonged to a fellow by the last name of... Th Therinlian. And a whole lot of other people claim it belonged to well, a whole lot of other people. But there's one thing we know for sure about this spittoon. Whosoever it was, they didn't use it for spitting into. They wore it as a hat. What? You gross. Haha, <laughs> right? They sure got in some weird stuff back then. Yeah, no kidding. Aw, oh, damn it. I wanted to fish around in the spittoon. Well, there's nothing else I can do in here. Let's go to the old fridge factory. While meandering the streets of Ocean City, you encounter a man carrying a medium-sized piece of luggage. Not brief enough to be called a briefcase, but unsuitable, unsuitable as a suitcase for more than two suits. Hey there, friend. You look like someone who appreciates a fine pair of pants. I do. What is it? What is it? What does that even look like? Astute, discerning, even I, even dare I say, pacificacious. I have never met anyone who dared say that word before. Listen, I got a pair of pants here that's gonna knock your socks off. What? He opens his case and pulled out a pair of slacks that are oddly stiff and shiny. Feast your eyes on these babies. What's up with them? Waxed slacks. <laughs> these durable waxed... Wax infused trousers, grease will slide off you like grease off a duck's leg. <laughs> they're waxed, guaranteed grease proof, and they're yours for only 20 meat. No, thank you. You're passing up the chance of a lifetime, but alright, maybe next time then. I'm still heartbroken, I want that spittoon. This toll booth has obviously been stolen and dragged. <laughs> His fellows look like they're here for some serious business. Try to make a deal. Whoa there, buddy. This is a private party. Club members only. Yeah, like he said, club members only. What kind of club is it? It's the Federal... It's the Fraternal Order of people who bribed us more than we're earning as gate guards. Fop Bum Egg? I've never heard of it. How do I join? What do you think? I'd have thought it was obvious, pal. You give us meat. How much? 500! <laughs> yeah, 500. Clancy, I told you to knock it off that repeating business. How am I supposed to come up with that kind of meat? Ah, you could try panhandling with other bums over there. Over in Gold... Goldthwaite Park. Where's that? Just northwest of here. You can't miss it. Yeah, you can't miss it. For the love of Mike Clancy, dry up! Well, it looks like I'm going to get some gold. As you're walking, Gabby strikes up a conversation. So, are you new in Ocean City? Your first time at it? Uh, that's right, yeah. What things have have you got of it? 
Well, to be honest with you, it seems a little run down. Yes, Gabby understands you. Yes, Gabby understands you. It was much nicer before an economy happened. Lots of people. Very excitement. Oh, oh. Have you seen the boardwalk? Boardwalk yet? It's like a cat wearing pajamas. What? It has games there. And the future teller. Well, that does sound like uh, a cat wearing pajamas. I'll check that out later. The door, to, uh, the door to the botanical garden is locked. Probably they don't want any of the plants to escape. <laughs> A sign about these pointy rocks. Read it. Presented to Goldthwaite Park in November 13th, 1922 by Margaret... By Margaret something. Uh, Ocean City Com Comptroller. A few of my favourite pointy rocks. Huh, looks like part of the sign's been graffitied. Some neat little pointy rocks. Botanical gardens. Okay. Who's this guy? Park groundskeeper is inspecting a clipboard with a with the panicked paralysis of someone who, who has so much work to do that they can't do any of it. Hi there. Is something wrong? Huh? Oh. Uh. Sorry, fella. I didn't want to seem rude, but I'm much too busy to chat. I'm stuck running this place by myself, and there's about a million things to do. Well, I could use a little extra pocket meat. How can I help you out? That would be great, except the new city regulations disallow hiring random part-timers. Since, uh, since this is a municipal park, only government official contractors are allowed to work here. Wait, there's a law against side quests? Why? <laughs> Just to be a thorn in my side as far as I can tell. It's not like any of these tasks are dangerous or anything. You got kind of a cagey look on your face when you said that. Well, two of them are dangerous, but that's n that's n that isn't even half. And I submitted a request for help weeks ago and still haven't heard anything back. Well, you're in luck. I just so happen to be an official government contractor. That would be ter that would be terrific, but I am going to need to see some proof of that. Uh, lie through your teeth. <laughs> What, you don't believe me? I'm hurt. I'll never... I'll have you know I was recruited by Mr. Johnson himself. Who? Johnson. From Parks and Rec? Jeez, man, you don't know your own department? He'd, he'd outright... He'd be outright dismayed to hear that. Oh, that Johnson. No, no, it's fine. No problems here. Great, what do you need me to do? Well, that depends on what kind of contractor you are. I'm, uh... I am... Uh, plumber. Well, that's plum convenient. Ha 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 ha. Our fountain stopped running because it requires a real specific water pressure, and the pressure we get from the municipal water supply has gotten unreliable lately, so I need someone to go down and adjust it. I'll unlock the manhole for you. The groundskeeper unlocks the maintenance shed behind him. Can't promise there's anything, uh, there's anything you'll need in there, but feel free to borrow whatever strikes you fancy. Sounds good to me. Plates of homemade cookies. Grab one. Oh boy, oh boy. You got a homemade cookie. This is far more charm than any of those new angled factory made ones. It's a locker, but it's not locked. It's a pair of... Oh, a pair of spare overalls. You can tell they're spare because they say spare on the name tag. <laughs> they're durable and comfortable, but they wouldn't be appropriate for a fancy gala. Luckily, you're unlikely to be invited to any fancy galas. Shelf laden with miscellaneous junk. Got junk mail and a match. Junk mail is a new technology that allows trash to be distributed to everyone so that we can all get air in the effort of throwing it away. Match. A reliable, a reliable, if expendable, source of very small amounts of fire. Shelf is full of various herbicides and weed killing chemicals. Park maintenance wouldn't be interesting if it weren't pretend. Would be interesting. Uh. It's a filth beckon statue. Just dirty statues. Can I get more quests? A landscaper. Oh, perfect. Our carnivorous plant exhibition in the botanical gardens has gone out of control. Huh? When you say out of control, as in this is less of a job for pruning shears and more a baseball bat with nails in it. 
Let's take up all the quests. Uh, a bunch of horrible monsters got in. I'm afraid they're going to hurt the butterflies. Some of them are rare and expensive. Can you describe the monsters? Nope. I, d I deliberately did not get a close look at them. That sounds awful, but all right. I am a security guard as well. A security guard? That's awful humble for a police officer. What? I mean, since the municipal police force was entirely replaced with contractors, you might as well call yourself a cop, right? All the rest of them do. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. There's a hobo that's been hanging around the park fountain. I'd like you to move him along. Is he causing trouble? No, not as such. Everyone likes him, but busking in the park is against city ordinance. And rules are rules, you know? And I'm a statue polisher. Oh, thank God. I sure wasn't looking forward to doing that job. I think the birds must be eating leftovers from the old sna <laughs> Snackle Cakes factory. It's horrible. Here's the rag. You got a statue wiping rag. This is one of Joplin's less popular works. I just... Requires stench armor. Oh, I should have gotten the... Oh, no, I should have gotten those pants. I should have got those waxed pants. Why was I so... Ah... Uh... Probably get some stench armor from someone. This hobo is really going to town on that oboe. Hey, mister, can you spare a little meat? Actually, I need you to leave. You what? Yeah, sorry, but the caretakers say you've got to go. There's a city orna There's a city ordinance against busking here. Is he says? Humph. Funny how. Humph. Funny how that only. Ugh. Funny how that only starts getting enforced after I stopped giving, giving that bozo a cut. Of course, you and I both know, know the only police, only the police can actually run me out of here, and you ain't no float, flatfoot. This is true. I could make it worth. I'll come back for some. I can get bamboozle. Oh, I've got a lot of XP. Oh wow. This, this is a lot of abilities. I was not ready for this. Okay, so... None of them here are stench resistance. Uh, I'll, uh, I have got 50 XP, so... More moxie. How do I get... How do I get bamboozle in? I want to bamboozle in. What's down here? No, stop messing with these switches. The fountain does not work unless the pressure is exactly 40 gallons per minute. It says 50 gallons per minute. Switch turn on. 7 gallons. 37. This one on. It's 33. 53. Okay, so I turn them all off. Read one. That does 30. That does 15. That does 6. And this one does 3. So if I flick these on. 10. Boom! I am so smart. Something about monsters in here. Oh! Giant cricket is a bear. They're not harmful then. There's got to be a pacifist way to get rid of them. Bamboozle is far right, second from the top. 
Yes. I'm gonna bamboozle him. Thank you, chat. Uh, actually, I need you to leave. This is true. Oh, I need more Moxie as well. Ah, damn it. Uh, upgrade my Moxie. And what's my... Uh, what do I have? Do I have anything in the inventory that increases Moxie? Increases armor. HP. I want food. Do I not have potions, stench arm? Oh! on this deodorant so I can give myself some stench resistance. It's a good thing I... It's a good thing this was organized. A statue of... Cornethia Beschenbossel. Uh, Mayor of Ocean City is credited with putting Ocean City on the map by suggesting maybe we should build a dock or something so boats can park here. <laughs> there you go, now you can get a look at it. Cola War Soldier. Award war always doesn't change. Many of the forces of the Red uh, continue to dominate the fresh forevermore. Granite sculpture of an owl skeleton. This statue, hand chiseled from the photo reference uh, by Hobart Buppert. Crud oh. drenched statue. There we go. Cold War soldier. Here's to all the brave boys in blue who took the ultimate challenge. Daniel Ocean. Daniel Ocean founded Ocean City in 1770 on his deathbed in 8. Eno 4 requested that visitors uh, to this monument only view the statue from the left so that he it was his better side. Well, I've done some of your jobs. So I've done, it was the fountain, it was these. You went to the botanical garden to find it overrun with dangerous looking weeds. Control system for Takano Garden's extremely complicated watering system. A nervous looking team mans the tea counter. Buy some tea. Ooh, I can boost my moxie. Weak mushroom tea, Mr. Counter. I need moxie. Northern palm tree, do not punch. Don't tell me what to do. Ow. I deserve that. A broken coconut. A broken coconut. You can't remember where you got it. Plain sword, sword leaf. Look really sharp. You could probably take it if you were careful. I'll grab some. I got a sword leaf leaf sword. <laughs> Deals moxie plus two physical damage. I would like that. Can I... There's got to be another way to get rid of those plants. There has to be. Ooh! I got some herbicides. That's basically what I need. Fight them. No, actually no, I don't want to fight. Uh, surrender. It's... You're felled by the foliage. You totally lost that fight on purpose. You don't even care. <laughs> Water off the dog's back. I got Moxie! Okay, I need muscle if I want to activate the weed killer. Uh, 
Right, well, first of all, I'll get this homeless guy out of here. I need you to leave. This is true. Bamboozle him. You pull out a toothpick and stick it in your mouth so to appear more nonchalant. Bosking in a park? Well, that's Jake, I suppose. The way you say that makes me think you don't think it's particularly Jake, fella. Nah, nah, it's Jake. Peach, even. It's just... Just what? Bosking at the docks is where it's at these days. It's all. All the hip cats are playing the docks, you know? I see. Well, if you'll excuse me, I just remembered that I have business. Elsewhere. He hastily shoves his oboe into his battered case and heads in the direction of some docks. Now that's what I call Jake. Nice. I convinced the hobo to leave. Okay. I need to figure out how to get rid of those big bugs. Um, anything that boosts my strength. Uh, you know, I could just buy some of the strength boosting tea. I, uh, yeah, I'll buy some strength boosting tea. I can always just buy more. The muscle. Or how much XP do I have, actually, thinking about it? Yeah, yeah, I'll just buff up my XP. Uh, there we go. Do it! I should probably turn this off. Oh, it turns off automatically. Eyegrass, caution, avoid prolonged eye contact. Highland Bonebush. We're beginning to believe this is this specimen was donated as a joke. <laughs> Wetlands Nasty Bramble, donated by a patron with no regard for safety of the staff. Okay, so I've got that all sorted. Science. Whoa. Hey. <laughs> I gotta stay away from that. You don't trust this pendulum enough to get close to it. Check out this gigantic pendulum. Explore the wonders of the world of alchemy. Make some potions. I don't have any. Ooh. Glowing ooze. Energizing powder, frosty flakes. Wait, frosty flakes? It's like snow, but in flight form. Complimentary dihydrogen monoxide. No thanks, that sounds dangerous. This, this, this exhibit would be more educational if any of the gizmos were made. Some meat. There has to be something in the hall. But this book? No. There has to be something I'm missing for just these giant bugs. Anything further here? Ooh, a rock. Wander into the woods. Uh, how do I kill these bugs there? If I go in, will Gabby give me some hints? Send Gabby to the speakeasy, sure, but I. Ah, oh, man, how do I get rid of these bugs? Science Center. I've got anything in my inventory that will work. Maintenance overalls, homemade cookie. I'm just a great gamer. The best gamer. Let's leave the park. Let's... 
actually, uh, I need just one more thing of me. Uh, let's go to the boardwalk. Bedraggled Homo shuffles up to you with his hat in his hands. Excuse me, mister. I don't mean to, don't mean to trouble you. My name's Murray Benedict, and I was wondering if you might have any meat you could spare. Just three meat for a cup of chill to warm these old bones. Well, I... Wait, what's that sack you're holding up? Old bones, like I said. Not today, sorry. You're not sure if the lamppost is holding up the hobo, or vice versa. Hi there, I'm Mike. Hey there, pleased to meet you, Mike. I'm Dusty. I can see that. Yep, I met a lot of new people in my travels, so I've got my name embroidered on my shirt for convenience. So, uh, what are you up to? Oh, nothing much, just hanging around. I was gonna run a three-card Monty down on Broadwalk, but that didn't pan out. Why not? There's a fellow already running the game down the alleyway, I prefer not to step on his toes. Just a matter of professional courtesy, you see. I see. And I also, also cause canaries get real scary about that kind of thing. I ain't looking to be murdered anytime soon. Connie's not canaries. Jeez. This is why I should stick to playing railroads online. Anyway, can I help? Well, that's real kind of you. I was thinking of looking for a different corner. You spare a nickel for a cup of joe to get my feet moving? Nope, sorry. Fortune teller's tent, pop inside. Complain about the price. Uh. You know what? I think I'll leave it here. Um, it's getting quite late. <sighs> and this has been kind of fun so far. I'm not sure if I'll play this again on stream. I don't know. But uh, next week... Maybe some railroads online? Maybe some kind of train game? Just because those tend to be a lot more crazy and energetic. So, uh, yeah. Play the Lionel game. I'm not going to play that game. Uh, there we go, that's the button I meant to click. Uh, Derail Valley is only fun if you've got friends playing with you. Just, just trying to stir up the hive a little bit here, guys. No? I'm not sure I, no, I'm, I'm not sure I want to let you guys join. On account of the fact that uh, usually that ends with my trains going off the rails. Rolling line? Maybe. I'll, I'll find something. I'll find something good to play. Uh, in the meantime... Just want to say your videos are dapper. Thank you. In the meantime, I'll call it an end to the stream here. Um, thanks for whoever tagged along for tagging along. And, uh, yeah. Maybe next time I'll, I'll do something worth actually playing. Or, well, worth watching at least. I just wanted to play this. I wanted an audience. So, uh... Yeah. Have a good night, ladies and gentlemen.